Looking for inspiring destinations, incredible places to stay, and the most exciting bucket list experiences to travel to next? Welcome to Destination Everywhere with hospitality and travel entrepreneurs, Todd Bloodworth and Andy McNeil. Having traveled to over 100 countries, Todd and Andy bring you unique perspectives with celebrities in the know, hospitality experts, and native connoisseurs to discover must-dos and inspirational destinations to plan your next trip for business or pleasure. So pack your bags and get ready as we bring you Destination Everywhere with Todd and Andy. Imagine a village with no streets, just cobblestone walkways and steps that lead you through a town of quaint shops and eateries, surrounded by terraced gardens spilling into the bluest lake you've ever seen. The top of Traveler's Bucket List for years, Lake Como in Northern Italy offers old world elegance in an upscale resort area set against the Alps. The many villages of Lake Como, which many visit by ferry or private boat, make this a fun and unique destination spot. Dramatic scenery of Italian architecture mixed with the Austrian hospitality make this area picturesque and perfect. Whether your mainstay or a stop while visiting the Alps or Milan, Lake Como is not to be missed. In today's episode, you'll meet the general manager, Sammy Gotcham, of the new five-star contemporary masterpiece, the Il Serena Hotel. He'll give us the scoop on what the celebrities do and must not miss activities around the hotel. We'll talk about the best time of year to visit, some tips on where to find the best local cuisine, and experiences not to be missed. Welcome to this episode of Destination Everywhere, Lake Como. Welcome everyone to Destination Everywhere. I'm Andy McNeil with my co-host Todd Ludworth, and we're so excited. Today we are taking you to Northern Italy, to the beautiful region with Lake Como, one of the most famous lakes in the world, with lots of celebrities and wonderful things to do and bucket list items galore. So Todd, what is going to be your favorite thing to focus on today? Buongiorno, Andy. Buongiorno. Uh, well, <laughs> you know what? I, first, I think it's important that we explain um, a little bit about the geography of Lake Como. Yeah, that's and, good. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, and, and this is one of those places for, you know, since the Roman times, uh, uh, the aristocrats and the wealthy have always used Lake Como as a destination. When you think of Lake Como, think of an upside down Y. And the northern part is basically the bottom of the Y. And then it splits out into two branches. And at the very inside top of that Y is a, a town called Bellagio. And Bellagio, obviously, the hotel in Vegas is uh, named after Bellagio. It's, uh, the town is actually, they say, has less people than the casino. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's not a very big town. But it is a beautiful town. And then around it, around the lake, are, are many other. It's about 53 square miles, I think, 53 or 56 square miles. And then there's, um, there's Como, there's Leco, which is down one of the branches, Bellagio up at the point, Terramezzo, Menaggio, and uh, Verena. And Menaggio and Verena are kind of close to Bellagio. So anyways, look at a, you know, Google an image of the map and you'll kind of see. And it also sits at the base of the Alps. So it's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. The scenery, if you, if you can see the photo behind me, the scenery is just spectacular. You know, you've got mountains and lake. It's uh, uh, the third biggest lake in Italy, but it is, it is uh, by far the deepest. It's uh, over 1,300 feet deep. So, and, and it's one of the most popular. You'll, you'll probably recognize it if you saw Ocean's 12 or Casino Royale uh, from the James Bond series. It's been in tons and tons of movies. Uh, don't forget uh, about Star Wars, Attack of the yep. Clones. It was in there. And yeah, I think John, really... John Legend, uh, he filmed a video, I think, close to me there. It's just uh, scenic. It's gorgeous. But it's very difficult to get around the lake. So you need destinations. You can do water taxis. You can do... Um, there's not a train that goes all the way around the lake um, and taxis and water taxis are very expensive. So you need to have a plan before you, you go. So people have been coming to Lake Como for a millennia and during the rise of the Ro Roman empire, that's how the villa architecture and the, the, the start of the villa architecture that you see that's so popular in Italy got its uh, start here in this region. And um, wealthy individuals from Rome used to come down 
and summer here. So, you know, despite the sheer, lo- uh, the sheer size of Lake Como, it only has one island that you can go to, but the, the community and the experience, which is absolutely incredible, and we've had a great time when we've gone, is in these small towns, in these communities that, that Todd mentioned. So uh, you do need to have a plan because it is a huge lake, and uh, but there's so many uh, great, incredible things to do. And we're going to take you um, on some great bucket list with our guests we have today. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. So to get to uh, Como, it's about 12 hour flight directly from New York. So that's a good uh, uh, estimate of, of how long it's going to take you to get there. And um, from Milan, it's what, Todd? How far is it from Milan? Uh, from well, from Milan, it's about an hour and a half. It's, uh, yeah. it's a little more than 50 miles. So yeah, you could fly into Milan. Um, eight hours from New York. They said, what, two hours from London. Uh, So yeah, yeah, I mean, there are options and uh, uh, availability is pretty good, but then you you probably need to get a car. Absolutely, absolutely. So we're gonna talk a little bit about um, the hotel that we're gonna visit today. It's called Il Sereno, which is the newest hotel. And we're gonna have the general manager, uh, Sammy from there. And he's gonna talk about um, this new five-star contemporary property that won the 2019 Condé Nast uh, Reader's Choice Award. So that's really exciting. And it's an incredible venue. He's got lots of great ideas of what to do, uh, but just the uh, hotel itself is definitely a bucket list experience. Well, when uh, we come back, we're gonna take a quick break, but uh, we're really excited to hear from Sammy. Sammy's actually got two properties uh, on Lake Como and another one in the uh, West French Indies in, in St. Bart's. So, uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back with Sammy Gotcham from uh, Serena Hotels. Welcome back to Destination Everywhere. Uh, we are uh, at Lake Como and we have a very special guest joining us today. We have the Managing Director of Serena Hotels and that is Sammy Gotcham. Sammy, welcome to the show. How are you? Very good. Thank you, Todd. Thrilled to be here. Well, and, and you have some amazing properties, but um, first let's talk about you. Uh, you. You've been in hospitality at some level for quite a long time. Give us a little bit about your history. Sure. I'd say uh, more travel and tourism. Uh, my history starts, uh, my career started right out of university working for an airline, actually, a French airline, Air France, and uh, spent 17 years there between sales, marketing, uh, eventually took over and managed their alliance department. Um, and did that for the better part of my career and really got into hospitality, I would say about seven years ago when I uh, started as a general manager for Le Cerno and St. Bart's. In between the airline and ho- hospitality uh, or the hotel job, I also uh, for three years was the managing director of Frosch, a large travel management company in New York City. So I've sort of touched on various ends of it, but always staying within the, uh, the industry. So, and you mentioned St. Bart's and I know we're, we're, we're in Lake Como, but uh, tell us just briefly about the St. Barge property because it, it recently went underwent extensive renovations, did it not? It did. Uh, following Hurricane Irma, we rebuilt the entire property from the ground up. And that was uh, just about two years ago. So since then, it's kind of uh, um, sort of working, working at a new hotel. We relaunched it. And that hotel has been around for 12 years. So again, I came in seven years ago and sort of divide my time between St. Bart's uh, and Lake Como. That's a tough life there, Sammy. <laughs> yeah, there, That's there good, are, good for it you. could be worse, could be worse. Yeah, it could be, could be worse. Um, are the properties similar in any way or is, I know that the one in uh, Lake Como is very contemporary. How about the one in St. Bart's? The one in St. Bart's, I would almost say it's, uh, it's timeless. Uh, the one in St. Bart's is uh, designed by Christian Lieg who's more about understated elegance, uh, understated luxury. And um, both of them are similar in that they, uh, uh, all rooms are sort of facing stunning views, uh, facing the water, the same in St. Bart's, uh, all rooms directed towards the, uh, the ocean. Um, and all rooms uh, sort of have floor to ceiling windows. But again, uh, the one, uh, the one in, uh, in St. Bart's is more your French Caribbean luxury, relaxed feel. And, and the one here in Lake Como is designed by Patricia Arquiola, um, also equally stunning with every single room facing the water and floor to ceiling Beautiful. windows. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, well, let's, let's, let's start talking about this amazing property you have. The first 
new construction on Lake Como in, in 100 years, we heard. And um, it won the 2019 uh, Condé Nast Traveler Reader's Choice Award. What is that like being awarded something like that? And what is the process that you guys have to go through? Is it a surprise? Do they just tell you? I'm really interested, and I'm sure our listeners would love to hear how you guys got such a, a, a fantastic um, accolade. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's it's an indication of just the hard work that the team has done because it is a surprise. I mean, you, you don't take these things for granted. It's a lot of work uh, towards, uh, I mean, on behalf of the marketing, but also the team that makes every guest happy here. So they've worked very hard since the opening, which was about two and a half, uh, three and a half years ago, and also worked very hard in getting the word out. So it's one thing to build this property, but another thing to put it on the map and, and get it uh, the exposure. That's, that's uh, ultimately what's been recognized. Um, but a great achievement, and it's something every year we try to, uh, we try to accomplish uh, or keep uh, getting the word out about this great property. Well, let's talk a little bit about some of the bucket list experiences on property, because not only Lake Como itself is a you know, once-in-a-lifetime destination for, for anyone, but your hotel itself is actually uh, a bucket list destination, meaning you can go there and have kind of an experience of a lifetime. I'm sitting in your spa right now, if you see behind me for our friends <laughs> on YouTube. But um, uh, tell us a little bit about some of the things you can do on property that are really, really unique. And uh, let's st start with the spa right here. Sure. Um, actually, if I, uh, if I look exactly, you're, you're in the restaurant, actually, one of the arches. Okay. Looking out for the restaurant. Yeah, exactly. Overlooking the spa. Excellent. Um, great view. Uh, what I always say, anybody who comes to Lake Como, Lake Como as a destination is stunning. It is amazing. But anybody that does come must spend time out on the water. So uh, that's For an sure. absolute must. Whether you're going to take one of our custom-made Riva Jetto boats uh, that are self-drive and all you need is a driver's license to do that, or our Vaporino, which comes with a, uh, a captain or, or a skipper, or just walk into the nearby village called Torno and um, jump on the local ferry for a few euros and venture north or south. Don't leave without spending time on the water because it's actually from the water that the beauty of Lake Como is built along the shores of the lake. So all the villages, the stunning homes, restaurants and so forth are all at, uh, at water level. Now, one of the things that uh, is special about the design of the hotel as well is all of that is the backdrop. And, I, and you have to, excuse me, I keep looking out to the left here because I do have this stunning view of Why don't the, you show us? Of the, of the lake. Uh, show us the like view. Tilt Perfect. the camera a little bit or the screen and you've got this beautiful view of the other side of the lake. Uh, the village oh, wow. on the other side. And, Look at that. Yeah. So, and, and right now you're doing this from a, a suite that's ground level actually penthouse level. So I'm doing this from our penthouse suite, which a little peak of that is right here. Amazing. Yeah, so this is a, a, a little sneak peek. This is our king bed in the penthouse. And if I go back to the outside, there's a, a passing boat going by, zipping by. And let's see if we lose you. And here we have another boat or two passing by. So beautiful day here in Lake Como sunny blue skies, a couple of clouds, but you can see these small little villages uh, on the other side of the lake on both sides. Absolutely gorgeous. Side. We're looking at August weather in Lake Como right now and it's gorgeous. And if you wanna look at the video of what, what we've just shown, go to uh, destination-everywhere.com because it's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, thank you for that, that view, it was absolutely That's gorgeous. You, you're, in a you're in a beautiful spot. And I, and I want to touch on these, these Riva boats. You've got to go to their website and check them out. They are beautiful wood boats. Uh, they're the, the two self-driving ones you mentioned. It reminds me kind of of a, of a presidential boat. You know, the inside is just <laughs> stunning. It's, it's covered if you don't want the sun, but uh, just great, unique experience to be able to get into one of those and go check out the lake. Are, are there lots of restaurants and, and places you can access by boat easily uh, from your property? Oh yeah, there's no shortage of them. Um, up and down the lake, there's a number of them. So whether it's with one of our boats or, or with a water taxi, uh, there are great restaurants just across the lake, but people will often go from here up to Bellagio or down to Como uh, for lunch or for dinner by boat. In fact, a lot of people also come to our own restaurant uh, and arrive by boat, uh, be dropped off by a water yeah, let's taxi. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about your restaurant because it's Michelin rated, right? 
Exactly. Very exciting. We got our first, uh, first and only, our Michelin star after seven months of operating. Congratulations. Uh, Chef, yeah. Chef Raffaele Lenzi is our, is our chef that, uh, that did this. And he has an amazing team uh, that delivers day in and day out. Uh, we've got a number of uh, great tasting menus, six, seven, eight course tasting menus. We've got an all day pool menu, a bistro menu. So you know, whether you want your spaghetti bolognese or your, uh, you know, your tasting uh, gourmet style uh, menu, it's, it's all there. And the best part is the entire, like the entire hotel, it's a very relaxed atmosphere. So while you're enjoying Michelin dining, you don't have to get all dressed up. You can come down in your jeans if you want, uh, uh, so to speak. That's well, and I always say uh, with, with chefs, I, I always kind of recommend it to people, you know, see if you can meet the chef because chefs are amazingly creative fun people for the most part. And I think going to a Michelin rated restaurant and then actually getting to speak to the chef, if it's possible, is always just a great experience. I couldn't agree more. Definitely. So you have a sister property on, on the lake itself. It's actually a, a villa that was built in 1573. That's been uh, refurbished to its, its, its former glory. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. The, um, it's got a great story to it. Uh, the Count of Anguissola um, had once killed the, and I always get confused if it's the son or the brother of the Pope at the time, and he needed to build a place to kind of come and hide. So he built uh, the Villa Pliniana and hung out there uh, for the next 20 years. Uh, Pope never found him, but it's in the, it's, in, it's sort of in a, in, a, in a corner elbow of the lake where he had great visibility uh, down and up the lake and behind him is a full mountain. So. The entire estate spreads across 18 acres. It's got a number two or three uh, waterfalls, a helicopter landing pad, uh, gardens, uh, spa, ballrooms, billiard room, et cetera, and is just a stunning, uh, stunning property, which is available now uh, for the first time in 500 years to actually rent as a, as a place to just lodge. Now there's uh, a bucket list item for you, for sure. For the villa, is it something that you have to take as a whole, or do you rent sleeping rooms in the villa? No, you would take it as a whole. So it comes with its uh, 18 bedrooms. Now we've had guests that have used two or three bedrooms at a time and uh, guests that have used all 18 bedrooms, but uh, we'd only rent it to one guest at a time. And whether they come again with a small family, a large group, a group of friends. How fantastic. Uh, and how far is it from your property? It's about 900 meters away. So it's a three minute boat ride, a oh, two nice. three minute car, car ride uh, or a walk, uh, but just up the lake from here. And, That's and fantastic. Sammy, Sammy, I have a, a question because you know, this property, the, the architecture is so contemporary. How was that received on Lake Como? When you know, people go to Italy, they kind of have this vision of these, the, you know, the, the old Italian architecture and then to go and see a brand new property on Lake Como it might, does it turn heads or people like just, where did that come from? You know, it's, how did you get that past? Uh, did you have obstacles in creating such a new space there? Yeah, um, great question. Well, first of all, our, our owners, uh, the Contreras family did not want to create a faux historic Italian uh, uh, structure. That's a good point. Um, but instead decided to work with a very, very highly regarded, well-respected uh, designer, uh, even here in, in Italy, uh, Patricia Chiola. And what's special about this property, this, the structure here, is that it really, I always say, if you, if you do get on a boat and you venture two, three hundred um, yards out into the lake and turn around, the, the hotel almost camouflages itself into the mountain. So because of the materials, the wood, We've got a vertical wall garden by Patrick Blanc. So the vegetation, the wood, Amazing. the stone, it perfectly blends itself. And you've got, to, you've got to look very hard to see where the property ends and starts because it does fit so perfectly into the, uh, into the mountain. And then the other thing is it doesn't come and sort of impose itself on the lake, but it really, I, I like to use the word kowtows itself to the lake because every single room faces a water, but every single room, uh, including the lobby, is floor to ceiling windows. So it really comes respecting the lake and it's all about the lake. And one of the best things to do while here, in addition to being spending time on the water in a boat, is just enjoying a cocktail, a tea or a coffee in the lobby and taking in the lake view. It's, it's, it's a show in itself. Is, is the lobby open air, open air a lot of the year? 
on a day like today, it is. So yeah. all the windows do open up, weather permitting, great nice. air circulation, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's an open air lobby uh, when weather permits. No, I was going to say, because, you know, we, we talk about some, some bucket list items, you know, you must have guests coming from all over the world. I think Lake Como, um, even in, in recent years, it's kind of become, or I'm hearing about it more possibly, that it's a, it's a, a destination for the rich and famous now. It's got this, this very kind of, uh, this, this elite status uh, that, that people want to go, if not to just possibly, you know, rub shoulders with somebody they've seen in a movie, but just the atmosphere itself is, is just kind of over the top. But as a general manager, you do you get asked, okay, you have a guest and they're on a, a, a it's a special occasion, maybe a 50th anniversary or or something along those lines. Coming from the business that, that Andy and I come in, you you get these requests sometimes and, and you're like, uh, well, I don't know if we can make that happen, but let's see if we can do it. Do you, can you think of anything off the top of your head that someone's come to you that seems a little outrageous, but you're like, we can make this happen for this guest? <laughs> That's, uh, that's funny. That's funny. Well, first of all, you're right. We do, uh, <laughs> we do have a lot of very interesting guests here. It's, it's almost every day. It's, there's, no, there's no shortage of that uh, um, for sure. I remember two funny, two unique requests that, that uh, one was a, a very, very, very well-known guest whose security team um, had asked me to somehow play along with them in explaining that it was too dangerous to swim in the lake um, <laughs> because they just did not want to have to deal. They didn't, they, they never took that into account in, in the three days prior with all the preparation and so <laughs> forth. So I sat there saying, well, I can't exactly say we've got shark or piranha ruled out. So how do I explain <laughs> that it's just too dangerous to jump off the jetty and swim in the lake? Uh, so that was that was a, a funny request. Another interesting request was a year or two later, and again, an equally uh, VIP guest. Um, they they had come to me and asked if I could assist in getting them to close down the town of Como um, <laughs> for a very special uh, part of their you know four or five day uh, visit. And, um, and, and the message was clear, whatever it would take. And I actually engaged or, or, or decided to try my best and venture into it. But, but those were two requests that, that, I, that I do remember that, I'll, that, I'll, that I won't forget. So. And we'll leave it to the listener's imagination, which uh, the names of those VIPs, if they're oh, well-known yeah. people. <laughs> Yeah. Well, well, I mean, it's, it's, I love that you didn't say no. That's great. Yeah, that's <laughs> No, no, no. We, it's never no. We'll, we'll certainly try everything. That's so. Awesome. Well, thank you for um, sharing your hotel with us. Um, Sammy, we're going to move into our rapid fire questions about uh, your world traveler. You've been all over. I think you have been to 130 countries. Is, is that what I, I read at one point? Maybe yeah. more. But we have we like to give our listeners and our followers on social media tips from people like you who are world travelers and and do it right. And so we're going to give you these four questions and let us uh uh, let's ha have your best answer. So the first one is, have you ever completed anything on your personal bucket list? And if so, what was it? Well, my dream was always to be an expat. And I think, you know, having uh, taken my first assignment abroad in St. Bart's and then, and then now living in Lake Como. So half your half here. I think I did okay on that. Yeah. Um, sure. <laughs> Cause I, I don't think we mentioned you're a son of Chicago, right? You're, you're from Chicago, Chicago in the York, city, right? Yeah. Yeah, Chicago, but I, I identify a bit more as a New Yorker. I mean, the past 25 years in New York City, um, but my dream was always to work abroad. So I ended up in two beautiful destinations, yeah. and, uh, and that was uh, that was that was on my list. So that's great, excellent. So um, if you could live anywhere in the world, I mean, this is you know for for you, <laughs> you're already living in two amazing places. But anywhere else, if you could live anywhere else in the world for a year, where would it be? Definitely, clearly is, uh, has always been and would always be Japan. It's always been a dream of mine to live in Japan for a year. It's a culture that intrigues me. Uh, the food I love, the, the culture, the people. It's, 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 fantastic it's a place. culture and country I know so little about that would love to learn more about and experience it firsthand for, for a year would be Japan yeah. for sure. So, uh, so a lot of people don't know this. Um, so for our listeners, a bucket list item, uh, Japan's uh, fall foliage rivals the Northeast United States and it's absolutely spectacular. So uh, one of the best trips I ever took. So if you ever uh, uh, are there in the fall, you will be pleasantly surprised. 
That's that's interesting because we always talk about the cherry blossoms in April, but yeah. you're right. The the fall uh, foliage. Uh, it's one absolutely of my favorite fantastic. things in, in Vermont. Wow. Great. All right. This is a fun one. When you're packing for a trip, what is something you pack that might uh, surprise our listeners? Uh, that's funny. Um, gosh, I seem to pack everything in addition to the usual portable batteries because I hate when my cell phone runs out, etc. But one thing that I have consistently taken for the past few years is a very, very strong um, flashlight, um, which has served many purposes. But I, I'm into flashlights. I always go, there's a brand I like, it's Surefire. You can check it out on the internet. I will. And, and I always buy the strongest Surefire 1000 lumen flashlight, which has done everything from come in handy to, I mean, it's also, it's security wise, it's been very helpful in some of the remote, re, most remote countries uh, around the world. So yeah, it's probably my awesome. flashlight. And uh, what is, uh... What is your most memorable experience at Lake Como since you've been there? That's our final oh, gosh. question. Uh, good one. Um, <laughs> probably opening day. We opened to a very high profile wedding, um, very high profile with a, a guest list of 50 guests, also all very high profile uh, uh, VIP individuals. And the construction of the hotel finished as the guests were coming in. And it was the entire day of, of walking guests to rooms, a guest from room whatever calling and saying, does this room come with a TV? Realizing maybe we forgot to put a TV <laughs> on that wall. To, you know, to just some of the, the funniest things. And, and, and I have to say the, the actual guests could not have been more pleasant and enjoyed or, or were able to kind of laugh at, at some of the funniest of experiences. So opening a hotel that just you just finished building it and you open to a wedding it was it was unforgettable that's incredible that's incredible uh, my last personal question is you know you, you're an expat like you said you're living um uh in lake como you've been there for several years now and I'm, I'm sure you've eaten a lot of great italian meals there and you know italy is one of my favorite places i've been many times what is your kind of go-to favorite must-have Italian meal in Lake Como that uh, you can tell our listeners about. Wow, that's that's funny. Um, I love I love the food here. Uh, there are times I've had my fair share of carbs and yeah. kind of some, <laughs> sometimes I'm pizza and pasta out. Uh, um, but here in Como, rather uh, than any particular cuisine or restaurant, I tend to have I, I have my go to place for a fabulous you know tagliolini with uh, fungi mushroom and and, and truffle. Or I go to a favorite restaurant where the pizza crust is black from squid ink. I've even found um, an Umbrian restaurant that has a hamburger that I would put in the top three hamburgers uh, I've oh, had wow. in my life. Uh, so an Italian hamburger. Expected. Yeah, I wasn't exactly. I wasn't Italian. expecting Italian hamburgers. So that's a yes, great one. Yes, exactly. Um, but no, there's some great great dining options uh, throughout the lake and. And I probably say my my favorite dish of 2020 is the pistachio spaghetti right here at uh, Il Sereno. Oh, that league. sounds like a that sounds it's like a winner. league of its own. Yeah, yeah. And, so. and Sammy, I, I have a question more about its activities outside of outside of the property and the actual water activities. What's something that you could recommend that that you being a local now uh, that someone might not you know you're not going to find it in, in a brochure, but what is some place you could say you, you just got to do this? Okay, um, aside from driving to the Laura Piana factory store, uh, for me, at <laughs> yeah. least in 2000, uh, 2020, I've had a little more uh, time to explore. It's the hiking. I mean, this year has been the oh, year wow. of hiking. And, and I say that because right behind Todd is an amazing aerial or high elevation uh, photo. And, you know, uh, I, you can go to the top of these mountains. You don't think to because you're always focused on what's at water level and mm -hmm. seeing it from the water. But some of the hikes I've done in the past uh, few weeks uh, reach the tops of these, uh, of these mountaintops and seeing a stunning lake from such high elevation is, is quite an experience. Uh, so. that's, that's, de that's definitely a great experience and, and a great and, bucket list item. And are yeah. there, are there, does your concierge have trail maps of some of those trails where if someone wants to go hiking, they can go check it out? Plenty of trail maps, plenty of uh, hiking escorts. There's some awesome, um, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, cell phone or smartphone apps that also identify 
these hikes all over. So I would tell any guest, pack a pair of hiking shoes and uh, put that on your list uh, when visiting the lake. Absolutely. That's awesome. Wonderful. Well, Sammy, um, I know you're a busy guy. You're, you're managing two hotels. Um, so thank you for being our guest. We greatly appreciate it. Um, I know our our followers and our um, subscribers will love learning about your hotel. And if you want to learn more, uh, go to ilserino.com um, or on Instagram, ilserino, and find out about this absolutely amazing contemporary property at Lake Como. And um, it definitely is a bucket list must, especially if you're doing a big celebrity wedding like we heard. So, Sammy, thank you for your time. We greatly appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we'll see you soon. Andy, Todd, thank you both very much. Uh, it's been great talking. And I look forward to welcoming uh, you guys in the lake someday. We look Thank forward you. to it. Thank you, Sammy. All right. Take care. Have a great day. Take care, guys. At AMI, we're passionate about meeting connections that change lives. For over 20 years, we have traveled our clients all over the globe, supporting their business goals and helping them stand apart. From hotel sourcing to audiovisual magic, we'll make your corporate meeting or event second to none. Go to AmericanMeetings.com to learn more. American Meetings, AMI. Meeting planning perfected. Welcome back. Uh, you know, I just want to thank Sammy again. Um, about Fantastic. What a great guy. No, he actually, you know, um, uh, he definitely is, is one of those people that has a passion for travel and, and just 130 countries. I mean, that's I, incredible. It, well, and then it, I loved hearing what they said about the hotel kind of um, uh, becoming a part of the of, of the scenery instead of becoming just a, a, you know, a modern piece of architecture sitting at the foot of the hills. It, the blending thing is actually pretty amazing. So uh, if you're ever in Lake Como, please go say hi to Sammy and um, go check out the property. It sounds absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely. So we're going to move into our bucket list items for Lake Como. We've got some great ideas for you and a nice surprise and one more inter interview for you um, about one of the bucket list items. So uh, here we go. So, so let's, you know, we know like, uh, We've got the lake and we've got, you know, the beautiful scenery and the hiking and the mountain biking. Um, but let's go into a second. Um, there's, um, there's, there's gardens, there's private and public gardens in many of the villas around the lake. And we're going to talk about one and that's uh, Villa, uh, Villa de Balbianello. And that is, uh, it's a garden. It's, it's, it's a villa, but you can't stay there. It's not a, um, it's not uh, a, a rentable property. Yeah. Right. It's not yeah. a rentable property. Um, but it is one of the most well-known villas on Lake Como. And this is a spot that was actually, you know, again, the set for, for Star Wars and James Bond fans. So, uh, so that alone. I believe it's where of, Queen Amidala and Anakin got married, Anakin, right? Anakin, yes, yes. Before he turned bad. Then they were yeah. kind of running in that field and it was just yeah. beautiful. And I, I think a lot of people probably think that's all CGI, but. Um, no, that's Lake Como, that, baby. That is that's Lake Como. That's how beautiful it is. That's I know. how beautiful it is. So, so this is one place, you know, again, it's, it's a gorgeous spot for like weddings and events. Um, yeah, but de sets, definitely obviously. a bucket list day trip. Uh, you got to go if you go to Lake Como. So certainly uh, uh, go there for sure. Absolutely. And I should say uh, it also hosts um, a music festival uh, every year in July and the music festival uh, it's, it's mid July and uh, we saw uh, we we saw a video and a picture today, a live image of what Lake Como looks like today, and it was absolutely stunning, and the weather was perfect. So July is probably spot on with that. But uh, it's a music festival, and you'll hear a lot of uh, classical music, and it's just absolutely gorgeous. It is um, the Lakmus Music Festival. It's an international, uh, and there's lots of participation. Um, so so you'll definitely want to add that to your list if you're there in July. So. Yeah, uh, Google it and get tickets early. All right, and our next bucket list item is to go to the Pearl of Lake Como, which is the town of Bellagio. And don't get it mixed up with the one in Vegas. This one is very quaint, very beautiful, and very crowded in the summertime. So if you go on the off season, it's even better. Uh, but just uh, great villa architecture. It has beautiful uh, gardens. The Villa Melzi is one you definitely want to see, uh, but an absolute great place for an incentive trip. Um, and, and, and we highly recommend. And then I want to, I want to touch on, you know, when you think of Italy, you think of a couple of different things in terms of food, you know, you obviously think of pastas, uh, but there's olive oil. Olive oil is just one yeah. of the gifts that Italy gives to the world. And um, you can actually go and do, uh, there's a, a very famous olive oil. It's the, uh, the Benini brothers. 
So you can go to their oil mill and it dates back to the 1850s. You can do tastings and, and purchase olive oil. So I would recommend that you do that if, if you do like olive oils. And obviously if you cook, salads they're just you know you can use it in so many things and it's so good for you too but the taste is absolutely amazing so be sure to do that andy what's next so we got the como cathedral obviously in como it was built in 1836 and has a lot of world-renowned art in it so if you're an art enthusiast you definitely want to go and it has beautiful uh beautiful history of the town as well as the gorgeous architecture of an italian cathedral so it is the como cathedral in the city of como so that is definitely on, a, on my bucket list. I want to go see that. Well, and, and this next item, it's something, uh, you know, I've done it at a couple of different places and it's, it's so much fun, but there are a lot of uh, family owned restaurants around the lake and a lot of them offer uh, culinary experiences. So you can sure. actually uh, go, uh, you know, and take a class, I take a class with one of the chefs and um, learn how to make some great things. You know, I, you know obviously I'm thinking pastas, but uh, there's so much more uh, that you can learn. So I definitely recommend doing a little bit of research and finding um, a place where you can take one of these intimate cooking classes, maybe just with you, a small group, um, but uh, great, it's something great you don't thing, Great thing to do on a, a misty or rainy day. Um, so to talk to your concierge, but definitely thing that can be kind of a memorable experience for your group uh, when you take them there. Um, and the next one is uh, to explore uh, Castello de Vizio. It's a medieval fortress nestled within an, an olive grove in the town of Verena. Uh, this what blew me away. It was just absolutely stunning uh, place to go and um, a place that you get to meander and enjoy uh, the history as well as a beautiful setting um, in this in this olive grove. So that, that is, again, in, in the um, city of Verena. So definitely put that on your list. And, you know, there's all these little towns all, all around Lake Como. So you can kind of hop over the course of the day to a few to uh, see all these really, really historical sites. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we've actually got a, we have two gentlemen that are going to be joining us. And they've started a company. Uh, they started it on Lake Como uh, a little over a year ago, maybe a year and a half. Um, and it's a definitely a bucket list item. There is only one on the entire lake. So uh, you're going to want to listen to what they have to say. And then if you ever visit Lake Como, you're definitely going to have to contact them and, and make it happen. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, so we have a great surprise for you. I mean, talk about a bucket list item. Can you imagine being on Lake Como and doing a amphibious car? Me actually driving a, a car into the water and then experiencing Lake Como from an automobile in the water. Well, that's what we're going to talk about right from, now with the founders. Of, from land uh, and sea. Yeah, from Lario Land. And this is uh, Francesco and Andrea. Nice to have you guys. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. So, you know, we're all about really unique bucket list experiences for our subscribers and our followers. And you guys certainly have one. And um, why don't you tell us a little bit about the history of your company and exactly what an amphibious car is and what the experience can be. Okay, so I can start and then um, Francesco can also continue the story. Uh, everything started uh, one year ago, um, one year and a half in the end of uh, 2018 uh, with this idea to make an amphibious tour. And uh, why this? Uh, it's because uh, uh, we know we live in an amazing area. Uh, Como Lake is, uh, is really nice, it's really beautiful. And then uh, amphibious, let's say, it's a fantastic and unique way to see this lake. Uh, and so uh, we wanted to start this company and to show to all the world uh, this amazing area in a, a, a unique way. Now, what type, of car, what type of car is it? The car is an uh, Amphicar. It's a, a German car made in the old 60s and uh, originally was made for uh, US business. Um, the Amphicar is uh, the first and only ever car built uh, in factory as amphibious. So uh, the car burn amphibious, burn um, able to ride the streets and uh, also dive into the water. Excellent. 
Excellent. So that was that was my next question. So you didn't retrofit the car. The car was designed to be an amphibious vehicle. It is. The car burn uh, amphibious with uh, rear uh, rear wheels uh, driving and uh, also with uh, true propellers still in the rear to move in the water. Now, can 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 the can the person actually drive the the car themselves? I get, uh, someone that rents the car from you guys. Yeah, it is possible. So the nice experience is that uh, you try the splash in and you try the splash in on your own. So it means you can drive the car, you can learn how to drive it and you test it really. And that's the most amazing part. So people get scared. They are at the, <laughs> at the steering wheel going into the water. This, uh, this is the most amazing part of the tour. Yeah. Is it, is it, is it um, easy to drive once you get it in the water? Is it just like driving a car? No. I guess uh, it is uh, easier to drive it in the water that, uh, than on, uh, on the road. Well, that's good. That's good to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's really simple. You only have to steer and uh, push the throttle. And uh, it's really, really funny. And uh, another part of the splash in it is that uh, it's really unique. So there are a lot of people always uh, watching and you uh, yeah. taking photos. So you can almost like feel like a VIP. And uh, maybe yeah. uh, also like James Bond, uh, you know, when uh, he drive out of the water. And because uh, I googled it, and a lot of pictures came up of your vehicle, which was really great. So it must be a very popular site on the lake. How many people? How many people can go in the car at one time? In the car can fit uh, four people maximum, and um, an instructor Larioland is always on board uh, to to teach how to drive, but also to check that everything is uh, is going well because. Uh, Still, you are in the deepest lake of Europe, oh, uh, Como yeah. Lake. So it's uh, it's uh, better to know what uh, what people are doing. Uh, but uh, so up to three people in the same. So time. so, so anybody that might be a little scared, what happens if a, a boat goes really fast by you? Does anything happen? Does the does it just go like this and go over the wave? Yeah, exactly. It just moves on the waves. Uh, not, nothing uh, worse can happen. It, That's great. It That's doesn't great. go really fast. So you are safe. <laughs> now, and are there any other amphibious vehicles? You know, like we have uh, in the States, we have duck tours, which are the, the boats uh, that go in. Are you the only amphibious vehicle right now on the lake? Yes, we are. And uh, we are also the first in Europe that uh, does, uh, um, Larian is the first in the Europe that does a uh, surface like that. Because uh, there are, uh, you know, uh, also in Europe, uh, um, amphibious buses that uh, yeah. can, you can uh, take a city site, but uh, with Larian, you can drive it. So uh, it's a really important difference. And uh, um, you can experience something uh, for a um, few people because uh, are small groups, uh, as told by Andrea, only a few people can uh, come in. And so um, it's a really personal also. How fast uh, does it go? Um, it drives uh, uh, 70 miles per hour on the street and uh, 7 miles per hour on, in the water. And this is why the car, actually the internal name is Amphicar 770. So gotcha. ah. 7 and 70. Interesting. Excellent. Now, do you guys have some, you know, it's been very popular, right? A lot of people are doing it. Yeah, we are actually, because uh, when we started this activity, all the people were um, taking videos and so on. So we went on all the newspapers and uh, so everybody knows us now on the lake. <laughs> That's great. That's great. And what is the most memorable thing? Is it the driving in, like you said earlier, is that the most memorable part of it? Or what do people really, really enjoy about the experience? I can uh, really enjoy the splash in, the, the, the transition from land to water is um, I guess the most iconic part of the tour of the experience and uh, because when you are in the water you are a boat when you are uh, on the road you are a car but uh, in that moment you are a boat or, and uh, it's really fun. So, so children are allowed as passengers correct? Yes it is. Great. Are, do you have other plans or do you have any plans to expand and add to your vehicle fleet. Uh, will there be two or three in the future, or are you going to just stay with one right now? So uh, now the plan is to stay with uh, one because of the virus. Unfortunately, we've been affected by it this uh, this year, like uh, the world. 
Uh, so we had this uh, this issue. In the future, why not? Why don't we extend to two or three vehicles or to another lake? We also had in mind to make an electric amphibious car, so to make uh, electric oh, wow. That'd be great. The, our project because we are uh, also mechanical engineers and uh, we like uh, to modify stuff and create something new. But this uh, okay requires money and uh, now... <laughs> Hey, yeah. it's a bit difficult, so we'll see in the future. That's great. That's great. It was, it's a fantastic bucket list thing for things to do when they go to Lake Como. And where should our guests or our followers go to on the internet to find um, your, uh, your car and how they can rent it? Well, you can find us uh, on Instagram, of course, uh, if you look for uh, Larioland, Larioland, on Facebook too. And uh, you can also surf uh, the, our website. Uh, larioland.it excellent that's, and that's lar l-a-r-i-o-l-a-n-d dot i-t great guys and now we we you know as locals as people who who are from uh, lake como and you guys obviously have a social life uh where do you like to go do you have a favorite restaurant uh somewhere on the lake that you like to go and hang out and have a uh, some good food and drinks yeah, there are uh, many amazing restaurants on the lake. Uh, we also have uh, our, uh, our own fish th that is fished here on the lake, and it's quite amazing. Uh, the, we have a partner restaurant uh, also that is a partner of us for our uh, longer, longer tours that is called uh, uh, Sottovento in Lierna. That, that, that restaurant you just mentioned, is that in uh, the, the town of Como or is that in one of the other uh, surrounding areas? No, the restaurant is in a town called Lierna. It's on the Lecco side because uh, uh, Como Lake is divided in two parts. So there are two branches. The right branch is uh, the area of Lecco where uh, both myself and Francesco are from. And it's even more natural than the Como area. Como is more touristic. And uh -huh. uh, Larioland is a nice experience because you can test and you can see both of these areas that are quite different, even if we are both on the same lake. So when you're not, when you're not on the lake, what do you guys enjoy doing? I heard uh, hiking is quite big around the lake. Yes, we do a lot of hike and um, Andrea and I also ride a mountain bike. So we really enjoy to, to go down, uh, downhill from our mountains. The principal, uh, the greatest uh, mountain is uh, Monte Barro because uh, it's a really natural area and uh, it's a natural park. And uh, mm -hmm. from the top of Monte Barro, even if uh, it is not uh, so high, you can see uh, a lot of uh, land around it, a lot of lake, and you can uh, saw um, Resegone, Grigna, Grignetta, all the mountains are really famous and um, you can hike them and um, you can enjoy it because uh, from the top you can see sometimes even to Como and uh, Milan. Are there, Excellent. if you don't, if you're not traveling with a bike, are there places that you can rent a mountain bike um, with access to the trails? Yes, there are a lot of um, um, shop uh, in Lecco and uh, also in a uh, town around Lecco and uh, also on Como side, uh, same. There are a lot of uh, shops where you can uh, rent a bike and uh, also e-bike to, to go exploring. Nice. Well, that's great. Well, I, 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 hadn't, I hadn't heard about mountain, mountain biking yet there, Todd. So that's a, a fantastic thing to do. No, it's starting to sound a, a little more like, uh, like the Northeast uh, US up in Vermont and in New Hampshire and Maine, a lot of mountains and, and hiking and mountain biking. Now, uh, another question. So uh, you guys have obviously done a lot. And, and you know, um, I think I read that, Andrea, you've traveled probably a little bit more than Francesco. But uh, do you guys have a bucket list adventure that you, you personally want to go on, uh, each of you, something that you haven't done yet that uh, uh, you're, you're really looking forward to make happen? Wow, yeah, it's a good question because I traveled uh, a lot of places in the world, but really I miss many areas. For example, South America is a, a good area where I, I would like to go because of mountain biking. There are really amazing mountains. And, uh, and then, yeah, I prefer uh, warm areas than cold areas. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Francesco, what about you? Well, I like uh, cold too, but uh, 
I even uh, like, uh, um, well, I like uh, hot uh, area too, but I also like uh, colder. Um, so I guess uh, I love uh, Africa. I've been in Kenya and uh, I want uh, to go back, but uh, I also never been uh, in uh, Canada. So I'm, I could, uh, could go there if, uh, if I can choose. Excellent. Nice. Great. Well, you, well, you guys, I, it sounds like you guys are, are extreme travelers, which uh, you guys go more on the adventure side, if that, if that, sounds, that sounds right. Uh, biking, hiking, and um, uh, more of the outdoor types. Yes. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, we, are, uh, we love extreme, extreme uh, travels, extreme sports. Yeah. We play also alpine ski, uh, powder ski, and snowboard, and uh, kite surf here on uh, Como Lake as well. And nice. uh, so uh, we were used to play motocross in the past. So <laughs> we really love, love uh, adventure. So I guess uh, this uh, was, is also a side that push us to, to start uh, an um, entrepreneur with uh, Larioland. Uh, and also our motto is uh, explore the unseen. So you also have to be prepared to explore and venture. And, uh, oh, that's uh, a great motto. I love that. Explore the unseen. Yes, well, because well, we, we want to, our customer to feel and enjoy Como Lake as we do. Excellent. Well, and, and we just always be sure to remind our, our listeners that uh, when they do travel, they are guests in your home. So we hope they, they respect the lake and, and the land around it uh, when they do visit. But um, that said, you know, guys, thank you so much for joining us thank today. Thank you, guys. Uh, we, we, um, again, we, we wish you all the best of luck and, uh, we can't wait to get out there and, um, visit Lario land and, and take a ride on, on, on your ambivious vehicle. So thanks guys for, uh, your time today. And, uh, again, listeners, if you're interested in running an amphibious vehicle as a bucket list item, uh, go to larioland.it or Instagram Lario land guys. Thanks for your time. Have a great day. Thank, Thank you, you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Welcome back, everybody. Gosh, what a great idea. What two great guys. I mean, if you get to Lake Como, what a bucket list experience to try is this amphibious car. Got to do it. And they seem just like two people that can show you around the city as well and all give you some great mountain biking and some great hiking um, uh, examples as well. Yeah, and just to, just to tell everybody again, that was uh, Andrea and Francesco, and their website is larioland.it, L-A-R-I-O-L-A-N-D.it. So reach out to them. And, and just like Andy said, um, if, they're, if the, the, the car is booked, you know, just say, hey, where's a good mountain biking trail? Or give me a place to go get a, a bike rental. And, and, you know, I'm sure these guys know a lot about the area. So uh, it's always best to get it from a local. So um, reach out to them. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna add them to my Facebook friends. Yeah, for sure. And so I think my bucket list of everything that we heard is uh, Villa Piliana. I just think that would be just kind of a once in a lifetime experience um, to rent that out with a group of friends or uh, go for the day. It would just be just be incredible. So that is the uh, the, the private villa that's actually owned by Il, Ser Il Sereno. So I highly recommend that. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, that's definitely one of mine. I do have a birthday coming up that uh, <laughs> is special. So um, I've got 18 rooms to fill. I'm thinking two guests per room, maybe a couple pullouts. So I probably, I can do 40 people at my birthday. There you go. And we could, we, I don't need a car because I could take a helicopter right from the airport. So that's very convenient for me. Um, that's awesome. You know, obviously, I, I absolutely love that suite that Sammy was in. Uh, at the Il Sereno, but, uh, you know, just the views alone, absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. But, um, you know, I'd love to go out into the town. I'd love to, you know, find a great, uh, you know, authentic Italian restaurant and just learn to make pasta. I've always said, I've never, I've never made pasta. Um, you know, I've always just bought it and that probably is insulting to many people in Italy, but, uh, I love to learn how to make, you know, different types of pasta, you know, run it through, the pasta maker and then hang it out uh and just you know just learn to prepare a great meal um yeah and so that's, that's, that's definitely, definitely what I'm about. yeah absolutely and then um, i think we, we covered exploring como bellagio and verena with activities so each yeah. one of those small towns is great and i want to mention something also you know um you'll see 
a lot of boats, but there's only there's there's a few spots for swimming on Lake Como. It's not something that you're going to see people like in in the areas around the towns, uh, villages. You're not going to see a lot of people um, swimming. Um, so you, there are there are designated swimming spots. Just be aware of that. Again, you know we're the guests, and um, you know respect the rules. Uh, it's a very it's it's heavy nature in this area. So uh, you know it's absolutely gorgeous, and you know just looking at um, uh, the scenery and the water, you know, I think uh, the locals there might might appreciate everybody keeping it as clean as possible. Yeah, and I think an another one that I would definitely want to try is olive oil tasting um, uh, yeah. in, the, in, the, in the town of Lena. Um, and uh, we talked a little bit about that and, and that experience. And that could be a great day trip for many of these small towns. So we highly recommend that. Yeah, well, speaking of boats, the um, El Serena's got those Riva wood custom crafted boats. Uh, so yes, that's, that's definitely it. something you can do. And you can either do a self driving one or they actually have a captain that will take you around so you can enjoy uh, some drinks along the way. So that's definitely on my bucket list. I definitely would want to do that. Yeah. And I saw, you know, of the two, I mean, I like being by myself, you know, because I, I know you can actually learn to drive the amphibious car. And you can also, you know, and you can drive the boats, but just to see the, the, the other boat that they have, it is so classic and so cool. If, if you don't mind a captain being with you on a great time, I mean, this thing is cool. Just, you know, you've got to check it out. It reminds yeah, me check it, check it out on the El Serena website. Um, it's definitely a, one of those once yeah. in a lifetime experiences. And the I can just imagine are, there. Yeah. And they're made in Italy. They're, they're, they're just handcrafted wood. Yeah, they're beautiful. absolutely gorgeous. Well, we'd like to uh, take a shout out to the Lake uh, Como Tourism for helping us put together this episode. This, thank you very much. So if you're headed to the area, make sure you check out lakecomotourism.it. They will bring you uh, some great ideas and they brought us some great ideas. So thank you guys. We, we greatly ap appreciate it. And as we leave today, we'd like to uh, thank our production team, Chris Jordan, our copywriter, uh, Guy Quattlebaum Jr., our content developer, Andy Fernandez, our creative director. And of course, Lauren Campbell, our podcast producer. So for Todd Lovworth, I'm Andy McNeil. We had a lot of fun showing you Lake Como, and we'll see you on the next episode of Destination Everywhere. You've just tuned in to another episode of Destination Everywhere with travel and hospitality entrepreneurs, Todd Bloodworth and Andy McNeil. To access the show notes and other helpful resources, visit destination-everywhere.com. Join us again next week for another bucket list filled show as we feature another travel worthy destination. Until next time, travel well and be safe out there.